Let's talk about how to organize, sort, and rate your photos after you get them into your computer. So in order for this to work, you have to have already copied and pasted your images off your camera into a folder on your computer or into your OneDrive. So I'm going to go here and we're going to use Bridge to sort our photos. So I'm going to type in Bridge in the search. It looks like this. Once Bridge opens, it's a lot like looking in the This PC area on your computer. It actually organizes and displays all the different areas of the computer. So this is a great way to organize your content. Um, so I am going to look for my folder with my images in it. Um, if you don't see it right away, you might have to go to your name folder that's over here. Now, when you open Bridge, there might it might also show up like this or like this. There's different views in Bridge. Um, I like to keep it on Essentials. So if it looks strange, make sure you're clicked on Essentials. And then you're going to go into your folder and you're going to look for OneDrive. But it's the OneDrive with Lake Orion Schools. For some reason, there's another OneDrive folder here. So I'm going to open my OneDrive. If it's linked to my computer, I should be able to see all of my folders from OneDrive. Now I'm going to find my photography folder. I have a photo one folder. If you're in design concepts or graphic design, make sure you find the correct folder. And I'm going to open that up. So once I'm in my folder, I can go through and start to rate these images. So by rating them, what you're going to do is you can assign each image one to five stars. Now, generally, my rating system, I just star the ones that I like. Um, so I only use one star. I just star the ones that I like, and I don't star the ones that I don't like. So what I'm going to do is kind of flip through here. You can change your view over here um, you, or under here even. I like to just have them in a film strip across the bottom and this one to be nice and large and to kind of show what it looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on each picture to view it. And I press control one to give it a star. So I just scroll through and star the ones that I like. You can do control, you know, five to give it five stars. Control zero will get rid of a star. So I'm gonna star that one. And I'm just gonna go through and star the images that I like. You can see I have a lot of variation here in my images. Okay, once you have starred your images, if you go up to filter up here, it, you can say show me one or more stars. On this, it's also over here at the moment, but I don't know if your screen will show it over here as well. So if I go to show me one or more stars, so I just usually go to this little funnel looking thing here. And now it's only showing me those that have one or more stars. If I did multi stars or multiple stars, you could do these other ones as well. Um, so now it's just showing me my best photos and the ones that I've starred that I like. Okay, so from here, you can open up Bridge into Photoshop to edit your images, um, or you can edit through Bridge as well. So um, Bridge is linked to Photoshop. So I want to mention as well, after you star them, if you want to rename your images, so say for some of our projects, if I wanted you to label them specifically like with an element or principle of art, you could click, right click on the image, and there's an option to rename. So I could call this cotton-light1, whatever I told you to name it or whatever you want to name it. And now look at it, it's renamed that image. Now, if I look into our folders, now if I go into this folder, I should see it's actually changed the name of that in my folder as well. If I look in my folder, I can't see the stars, I can't see the ratings, but I should be able to see if the name has changed. So in order to see those ratings, I have to have Bridge open. Now, Bridge will save the ratings. So if I close Bridge, you don't have to save anything. It will save all the stars and the ratings for you as long as you keep your photos in the same folder. It will also save the names that you renamed the photos. Um, but if you do any editing through Bridge, it only the edits only appear in Bridge when you're viewing them. So in order to save and edit permanently, you have to save it through Photoshop. So let me show you what I mean. In order to edit a photo, I can click on this photo. I'm going to right click on this photo and we're gonna open 
the image in Camera Raw. So if you right click and open in Camera Raw, if I'm right clicking on the image at the bottom, the little thumbnail, Open in Camera Raw is here. If I right click on this big, big icon of the image, I can rate it here, but I can also open in Camera Raw down here. So it is, uh, it just depends on where you're working if you click on the little icon or the big one. Okay, so Camera Raw is really, really nice because it gives you a lot of editing right here really quickly. So I can go through and make a lot of edits all at once over here in Camera Raw. So Camera Raw gives you all of these edits. Um, generally, I look at a photo and I think about what it looked like when I took the image, how can I enhance it? But a lot of times it's just doing a couple different little edits. So if it's something looks too yellow, you can always add a little blue to it. If it looks too blue because of the lighting, which often happens, you could add a little yellow to warm it up. And you can play with, I mean, actually green and magenta like will change the tone of your picture as well. Um, exposure is the brightness or darkness of your image. So you can go here and make it brighter or darker. So you just want to get a good balance of darks and lights and get some good detail in there. Contrast, you know, is lights get lighter, darks get darker, or you can bring down the contrast to kind of sharpen or soften everything. Highlight, if you go to the right, your highlighted areas will get brighter. If you go to the left, just the highlighted areas or just the brighter areas in your picture will get darker. Shadows, if you go to the left, oops, wrong one. If you go to the left, the shadows will get darker. If you go to the right, it'll just make the dark or the shadow areas brighter. And blacks and whites are kind of similar. I don't usually adjust this one too much, but you can kind of play with that just to see if you get like a good contrast there. Texture and clarity and dehaze. If you want to add more grittiness, you can adjust these. Like sometimes the clarity will sharpen up a little bit of a soft focus. Like so if you didn't focus it just right, you can play with the clarity and dehaze. Um, Dehaze, if you, you know, it kind of adds that texture as well. So I'm kind of cautious with these, especially with portraits. You don't want things to be really, really overly sharp. Um, and then vibrance, that will just add a little bit of color. Like it'll saturate the colors, but kind of minimally. It's a little more delicate, a little more subtle. But look, you could take the vibrance out to make it more of a soft antique look. Um, Saturation is like an exaggerated form of vib vibrance. It's just going to really saturate your colors, which can make skin look orange. Um, or you can take the color out completely to make it black and white here with the saturation. What's kind of cool in here too, you can look down here and see a before and after in these little icons. And, um, or here you could see it with your different edits. You can crop and bridge, which is this tool here. So I can crop if I need to cut out a piece. When you crop, if you drag out a little window, you can also go to the corner and see these little curved arrows. Oops, it'll allow you to, let me try that again. I'm going to click and drag. It will allow you to rotate. If you need to straighten something because it's crooked, you could do it this way. Now I avoid overcropping and cropping too much because it's cutting down the size of your picture. And so you're not able to print it as large if you crop a lot, but sometimes you just need to do a little bit just to zoom into some detail. Um, the other thing is there are some different things here like zooming in. Once you're zoomed in, you can move the picture around. You can um, change, this is for a red eye removal. And there's all sorts of things you can do here um, that you can play around with, rotating the picture, deleting it, and things like that. Um, for an image, I'm just going to click Done. Let's see. Okay. You can see, if you click on the image, it, it you can zoom in, and it's just showing you different parts of the image magnified there. Okay. So now these edits, come on. <laughs> these edits are done to the picture. However, um, they're only saved in Bridge. So when I go back to the file, like for instance, I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to right click, go to Camera Raw. Let's just make this black and white so you can really easily see that. So I'm going to go to Saturation, 
bring it down and hit done. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. You can see it's changed to black and white. Um, but, so this is Elliot 31B. If I look in my actual folder in here, even if I refresh it, my Elliot 31B is not changed for good. It's just temporarily changed in Bridge. So anytime I open Bridge, Bridge will save that edit and it's there, but it's not actually changed in my folder. So in order to permanently apply this edit, I actually have to open this photo in Photoshop. So if I'm in Camera Raw, and I'm editing a photo, let's make this one desaturated as well. And I do all the edits that I wanna do in here. I can, instead of clicking Done, Done is just gonna go back to the Bridge menu. I can open the image instead of clicking Done. So I'm gonna open that image. Oops. And what it's going to do is it's going to open it in Photoshop. So it's opening up Photoshop. You can also open an image in Photoshop through Bridge by just double clicking on the little thumbnail and it will open in Photoshop as well. Sometimes I accidentally do that when I'm meaning to open it in Camera Raw, I accidentally double click on it and then it opens it in Photoshop. Now Photoshop we'll get into, but it's great for, you know, really spot removal and taking one image and combining it with another. But a lot of the basic edits can be can be done through Bridge, through that Camera Raw function. So you can see my computer's taking a minute to load. Okay, but now it's open in Photoshop. So I have all these things I can do in Photoshop under image and adjustments. I can do all sorts of things here as well. Um, but uh, most of these things are available in that little menu in Bridge. So I'm not even gonna bother. Um, there's a lot of things here in Photoshop that you could use as well that we'll get into later. But for now, I just wanna save this. So. To save in Photoshop, we're going to go to File and Save As, just like you would in Microsoft Word or something like that. So I can rename it here, or if you've already named it in Bridge and the name looks good, um, you could leave it. When you're naming your files, it's always good to think about not having spacing, like so generally in files, you don't want to get in the habit of having a space. Um, you can do a dash to kind of separate things. You also do not want to do like a punctuation in a file. Sometimes it'll corrupt your file because it gets confused. So you can do a dash, but that's about the only punctuation that you can do. So um, if I did Elliot final one, I could do a dash again and then one. But you don't want to leave spaces or punctuation. And for this, I want to make sure it says JPEG. That's just a standard picture file. If it says Photoshop, that's bad because I can only view it in Photoshop. <laughs> the file won't show up if you don't have Photoshop. So I want to make sure this is a readable file. It's a picture that I can see on my phone, I can see on my website, I can see from any computer. So I'm going to use a, a JPEG. Do not choose JPEG 2000 or JPEG Stereo. It's just the JPEG and it'll add the extension for you after your picture when you hit save. So um, I'm just going to hit save. I don't have to worry about any of the stuff, just choose JPEG. I renamed it so it didn't save over my original, it has a different name. When you get here, when you save as a JPEG, always save it at the largest file. So sometimes it'll be like here, the quality will be low. Always drag this to the right, because that's gonna save it at the highest quality. It'll allow your picture file to stay really large so you can print it in the end really large if you wanted to. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my pictures here. So if you see here, this is still there. Elliot 32B, it's the original file, but I renamed it and saved it through Photoshop. So it's got that desaturated look and it's here because I gave it a new name. So it's up to you, you can save right over your old photos, um, but I like to save separate files so it keeps it separate and I have both versions so if I ever want to re-edit it, I can. There's one more advanced feature here that I want to show you in Bridge. If you need to edit multiple photos at once, because say you took some pictures and they're all a little bit too dark, you can select multiple pictures 
by holding down control. And then you can right click and go to open in camera raw. You can see here I have all four pictures opened now together in the camera raw window. I have to hold control once again to select all four of them. This is key. Remember to reselect them up here because then when I go to make adjustments, watch what happens. It will lighten them all the same amount all at once. When I'm done, if I'm done and I just want to go back and click done, I can. It'll save that in Bridge. But then if I want to save these permanently to my file and to my folder, I need to open them in Photoshop. So you can go to open images and it'll just take a minute. It should open all four images in Photoshop. And then once again, you can go here and save it from Photoshop.